Hey, I want to give you guys an update on the red algae that I showed you in a previous video where I cleaned it out of a tank by lowering the pH below 4, which of course is not the best. This tank here, the 55 gallon tank, if you remember from the last video, it had a lot of that red algae in it. It was everywhere. And what's happened is over time, there's not very many fish in here, but it does have a lot of plants, it has some driftwood. Over time, the pH has dropped down and it got down around 5. And then lately I've added a little bit of water. The reason I can't add water to it is my tap water's high pH, so it'll bring it right back up, which normally I don't want it as low as five, but the angelfish don't mind. They've been breeding in here. This pleco hasn't minded a bit. He looks just amazing. And there is no red algae left. It's gone. I mean, it's just gone. It's, I don't think there's any in here. The snails, Okay, so there's no pest snails anymore. Those are gone from here. I think it killed them. But the mystery snails, not happy, not good for their shells. Uh, pH probably would have dropped faster without them in here, honestly, because they're kind of helping. Their shells are buffering it a bit. But uh, they're alive, so we're going to get that pH back up, get some water in here, bring it back to normal, move these snails out for the most part, probably. They, they could go in a tank with some harder water than this but I don't see any red algae. It's just gone. And so this tank's probably been around 5.0 for a few weeks. Uh, right now it is a little higher than that. Right now we're at 5.8. And that's because I added water because I was using some of this water for some babies these guys had. I'll show you them. Pumpkin. Hi, Pumpkin. Pumpkin doesn't like it when I come over to this part of the fish room. I have to step up on this treadmill to get to things because there's too much stuff in here. But he doesn't like it. It's okay, pumpkin. Oh, see? I just barely moved. There he goes. He's a little spooky. Here's the little babies that I pulled out of that tank. There was a slate with a lot of eggs on it. And we got them out of there. Got them in here. And this water, of course, is really low pH, which is ideal for hatching angelfish. Now, if you guys remember, the first tank from the first video was a 20-gallon tank. Let's give you a little update on that one. It's been pretty good. It's got these cichlids in it. These are um, some sort of hybrids with Mbuna and uh, OB peacocks that are in there. But here's the thing. Um, I haven't put anything in this tank that I know of that had the red algae. And yet, there it is. It's back a little bit down here. So, long-term cure? I don't know. I think the cure is get it out of your tanks if you don't want it. If you like it, it's fine. If you don't want it, get it out. But you're going to have to, like, almost break the tank down and soak it in vinegar. I don't know. Um, I think it's something we have to live with. You can see over here what happens. You move ornaments around. I put this one in here so the plecos could eat the algae because they like it. There's so many plecos in this tank. Uh, they clean it off real good, but it's got that stuff. So of course now that spreads. So I think for the most part, if you want to get rid of this red algae, you're going to have to do something like this where you get the pH real low and let it be that way. And a lot of fish maybe don't like that. Uh, you get something like angelfish, they're okay. I don't think they should be at five. Uh, I think that's low, but maybe they're okay with it. I just, I don't know. I worry about that, but if you have a tank like this, with these Mbunas and peacocks, uh, you can't do anything about it. It's just there. You gotta live with it. I can't lower the pH in this tank. I mean, it's purposely high. I've got all this cichlid sand. I've got this Texas holy rock. Algae covered Texas holy rock. Um, look at that guy. But, uh, you know, I think it's one of these things, there's, there's nothing to do about it. We have to live with it. Also, I mentioned the tank where plants go to die uh, is the tank in the house. That one, the plants are doing really good now. I, I really heavily planted the tank and got a lot of valves in there, spiral valves, other plants in there. And so now the tank is an absolute jungle. The red algae seems to be receding. So I think there's a competition thing too. If you have a lot of plants in a tank with that, it's, you know, it's like any algae, it's got competition for the nutrients, and if you could put a lot of plants in there, it's not going to do as well, just like any algae. So that's the good news. 
and it doesn't seem to be affecting the plants in there. At least once I got to a critical mass of plants, that there's enough of them that it, you know, it actually can do enough to overcome the algae. If you have a few plants, it seems like maybe the algae outcompetes them. So it can go both ways. So that's my update on the red algae. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions or what you want to see next. Remember, everybody, keep it fishy and have fun. Thanks.